you for tuning in to the 2020 Computex Online Talks. This year, Computex is moving its annual Computex Forum online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2020 Computex Online Talks feature a series of presentations from global industry executives. NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Supermicro, Delta, and BenQ Business Solutions Alliance. They will be live-streamed on Computex's Facebook and YouTube channels from June 2nd to 4th. The recorded videos of the talks will be uploaded to the same channels so you can watch them again afterwards. Before travel restrictions are relaxed, Computex exhibitors and buyers can take advantage of the trade show's online services to keep abreast of the latest trends and stay connected with the industry. Without further ado, Walter Ye, President and CEO of the Taiwan External Trade Development Council, TITRA, the organizer of Computex, will now kickstart today's talk with his welcoming remarks. Ladies and gentlemen from all over the world, thank you so much for joining us here today. As you know, we are all impacted by travel restrictions due to COVID-19 pandemic. One of the many implications of this is the postponing of major events, such as Computex 2020, which was originally scheduled for this June. I know many people are greatly disappointed by this, including myself. So, as an alternative, we have decided to organize a series of virtual online events. Here in Taiwan, we have been able to successfully contain COVID-19 by leveraging and building up our technologies, such as electronic fences, big data, open data, mass, max, and more. We want to share with the world how Taiwan's ICT industry can support and even boost the successful recovery of the global supply chain. During this pandemic, Computex will continue to demonstrate its presence and industry leadership in assisting businesses to connect with the world. Without being physically in Taiwan, our exhibitors and buyers can still participate in, in Computex with Titra's online services. These services include online exhibitions, online sourcing meetings, online new product launches, and Computex online talks. The online exhibition is a new platform to showcase exhibitors' products and specifications. Buyers can ask questions directly, contact exhibitors, or place orders through an online platform. Online sourcing meetings are where we match exhibitors with buyers from around the world. Buyers can ask questions, receive offers, or even place orders with suppliers online. Online new product launches will consist of startups eager to reveal their latest offerings to potential buyers and investors from around the world. Today's event, Computex Online Talks, consists of a series of talks from global industry executives. For decades, Computex has played an important role in the global technology revolution and we will continue to do so. While our experts are busy fighting and containing COVID-19 during this challenging time, we have to do our part to move the economy. It seems our lifestyles have changed during this pandemic, but by using today's technologies, we can get through this together. So, please keep healthy, stay safe, and stay innovative. Hopefully, 
I will see you in Taiwan soon at our next edition of Computex. Enjoy today's Computex online talks. Thank you. In this Computex online talk, Charles Liang, founder, president, chief executive officer, and chairman of Supermicro, will talk about Supermicro's 5G infrastructure innovation. Supermicro is committed to meeting the requirements of 5G and telecom operators. As networks transition to a cloud-native architecture built on disaggregated software and hardware with virtualized network functions running on commercial, off-the-shelf systems. Charles' presentation today will focus on bringing together key technologists from Supermicro, its partners, and leading international telecom providers to discuss the latest solutions and innovations in telecommunication infrastructure from the edge to the cloud. The future of technology is reshaping itself, exposing what we once thought was adequate as being insufficient. Businesses can't afford to wait for a better time. We must push forward and do so faster. It's time to grow. Technology needs to be at the forefront of that growth, both pushing, pulling businesses, and at times carrying it on its back. Now, more than ever, the vision for the future of our world is digital, and we need to grow our infrastructure to support it and open our architectures to improve speed of adaptation and flexibility. Researchers need the infrastructure to test on a massive scale. Is tech ready for that challenge? Is tech ready to open, embrace, and grow cloud, 5G, AI, HPC, are all places where this is needed. So when it comes to making technology better, historically, Supermicro is first to answer the call. Since 1995, Supermicro has been a leader in server technology in Silicon Valley. From then till today, 2020, we continue to answer the call for growth and technology leadership. We've been listed as the fastest growing IT infrastructure company. We launched over 100 SKUs that boasted our resource savings, low environmental impact server architecture. And this year, we launched the broadest and deepest portfolio of AI high performance computing solutions, as well as 5G solutions complete from the edge to the data center. Under CEO Charles Lang's leadership and vision for the future of technology, Supermicro has demonstrated for nearly 30 years that when the industry asks for better technology in server and storage, we answer the call again and again and again. But not just better, better, faster, greener. Thank you for joining our Computex online talk. My name is Charles Liang and I am the CEO and founder of Supermicro Computer Inc. Today, I'd like to share with you what our 5G telco solution are ready for you. So Supermicro, as you may know, we are a well-known uh, server storage for enterprise market uh, player in us two decades. And we apply our uh, server building box solution for our product line for two decades already. The server building box solution advantage is to design, manufacture, uh, all the module, all the subsystem shareable among a different platform, different generation of product. So with that, we are able to save on the time, on the resource cost and share inventory and make uh, customer uh, order lead time much quicker because we share the uh, on shelf standard product and indeed also have uh, on site uh, 24 hour service because all the spare parts are shared at least lots of components subsystem are shareable so with that uh, we are very lucky recently we applied a server building box solution to 5G telco equipment and we found, wow, so wonderful. Uh, it saved our time from design, manufacture to service. 
So for example, six months ago, we have one uh, pretty big uh, telco company. They asked of us, ask us to design a smart uh, edge uh, for 5G. And they say they want da, 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 the spec. We say, wow, that's very powerful. And then we leverage our enterprise server storage, multiple, memo, and also other subsystem. And quickly, in two to three months, we provide a sample to customer, customer taste, and everything uh, qualified. Because the system, when we use for enterprise server storage, we already pass NAPs, already uh, NFV compliance. So when we use those building block to 5G solution, obviously it's NAPs perfectly ready. So we ship the sample to customer quickly, and then customer after test uh, in few weeks, it surprised me. I said, why so quick? I said, because everything is perfect. So because of that, so customer order uh, volume production right away. And customer expect we ship product, uh, I remember 1,000 systems in about two months. I said, two months is too long. Customer said, you say too fast or too long? I said, too long. He said, how quick you can deliver? I said, maybe three weeks. And then we deliver to customer in three weeks. Again, a secret because building box solution, we share most of our subsystem. And that's the, another beauty of building box solution. So everyone now, 5G is faster, better latency, higher bandwidth, much more rich contents, and much smarter. So people like 5G, and people deserve 5G quickly with Supermicro 5G telco hardware solution which we already optimize that data with all our uh, compliance, including the software for telco, for open architecture, and you know, that can make your 5G infrastructure much quicker and also uh, much more affordable. That means we can work together to make 5G more affordable to everyone. So other than a uh, uh, smart uh, edge, uh, including uh, those edge uh, hanged over a telco pole uh, high above the sky, uh, we also provide a, a similar solution. Indeed, they use the same memo, lots of the uh, same uh, subsystem for micro data center, for regional data center, and for large cloud data center. So all the system here you can see our Ultra 1U, Ultra 2U for enterprise server, our uh, smart edge, you know, all share the same board, share the same networking card, 25G, 100G, or 10 gps t whatever. All share the same parts. Da, 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 da. That's why it's faster and more cost affordable. So with this, I mean, uh, we will continue work with the uh, software ecosystem, those uh, uh, software community, and to enable uh, much rich 5G telco product line to support the telco market. So we're talking about uh, uh, smart edge, right? Talking about our uh, Hyper E, our Ultra E, short depth, uh, which is specifically optimized for uh, edge uh, computing for uh, 5G. We also uh, have uh, um, IP65 product line, which is again apply our billing box solution. So uh, when customer ask us for IP65, they're working for a uh, uh, rugged system uh, from uh, minus 40 degrees C to uh, 55 degrees C. And we design the uh, IP65 uh, uh, complete system for customer. Within three to four months, customer was very surprised. She for my how can you make a magic so fast and so good <laughs> again? Our only secret is building block solution. We apply our standard IoT inside the uh, IP65 uh, strong chassis enclosure. 
So make the system uh, able to run uh, reliably under a, a tough environment. Again, minus 40 to 55 degrees C, and we finish the design and go for manufacture in about four to five months. And again, it's cost uh, affordable, efficient, because we share the uh, enterprise server uh, storage IoT product line. So not just uh, uh, the edge side, we have a very strong uh, cloud side uh, product for uh, 5G and cloud. Uh, for example, here, our cloud DC product line. Cottage efficient, billion bulk solution, NEBS compliant, MVF optimized. All of those, again, share the common parts and we finish the design in just a couple of few months and then go for production right away and share the same inventory. So feeding block solution really help our customer a lot. And with this, let me uh, introduce a uh, really uh, industry expert in uh, IT uh, technology, in 5G uh, technology. Uh, he, he is one of my very old friends, um, Namin Shanoi uh, from Intel, Executive VP. Namin, please. Hi everyone, I'm Naveen Shanoi. I'm the Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Data Platforms Group at Intel. First, I hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy in these difficult times. At Intel, our number one priority has been keeping our employees safe and of course, to continue our collaborations and the innovation that we're bringing to market with our customers. Second, I'd like to thank Charles for having me here today. I wish that we could all be together in person in Taiwan at Computex, but being on video is going to have to do for now. I wanna remind everyone that Intel and Supermicro have been collaborating and working together for 27 years. And that collaboration has always endured in good times and in difficult times. And we've always pushed each other to innovate. For example, Supermicro and Intel invented one of the first dual socket Xeon servers all the way back in 2001. And think about in the intervening time since then, how much of the internet has been built on that dual socket Xeon server. We also collaborated together on the twin architecture, the half width motherboard that has gone on to become an industry standard. Looking ahead, we see an industry, an exciting future, uh, defined by four big megatrends. First, the proliferation of computing cloud architectures, both in the public cloud and in the private cloud. Second, the growth of AI. Third, the rise of uh, the intelligent edge or computing that moves closer to where the data is being created. And finally, the shift to 5G that is upon us now. Simply stated, the future is all about unleashing the power of the massive amounts of data around the world. And at Intel, we've been working on the industry's broadest portfolio to help move data, to store data, and to process all that data. From smart NICs, and silicon photonics, to NAND and Optane memory, to FPGAs, ASICs, GPUs, and of course, the Xeon microprocessor. These solutions are going to be the things that we collaborate with all of our customers on to invent the future. The exponential increase in demand that we're seeing now, the shift to e-everything, e-commerce, e-education, e-video conferencing, even e-health. This is gonna require even deeper collaboration with all of our industry partners. And I'm excited to be extending our partnership with Supermicro today into new and exciting areas. We've been working closely together on the telecommunications industry landscape shift on 4G and upcoming with 5G and the move to VRAN and ORAN. We're also very excited to be collaborating and working together on high performance computing. Uh, I'm particularly grateful for the collaboration uh, with Supermicro on the Ruby project at Lawrence Livermore. 
This is a solution designed to bring supercomputing to bear uh, to fight COVID-19 to help solve that major industry challenge that we have today. So with partners like we have with Supermicro and with you personally, Charles, I know that as an industry, we are going to be able to unleash the power of data around the world and solve problems at a scale that we've never seen before. Thank you all very much. Have a great Computex. Thank you, Namin, for your visionary sharing. Thank you. Now I want to put my mask on. Why I put my face mask on? Because coronavirus. Some people say coronavirus related to global warming because temperature is higher, lots of things, including virus, got more energy. And that makes our planet less safe. So, super micro green computing, resource saving, are based on similar concept. We want to save energy cost for our customer. We want to save resource for our customer. So they pay less for their hardware acquisition. Our green computing resource saving solution cost customer no extra cost, but save their money and make our environment more healthier. For example, our super play here. You know, again, resource saving. You share a lot of the same module, share a lot of the same resource. And we designed the product line with power saving in mind. We have uh, some customer, including Intel data center, from their white paper. It show they are able to save up to 40% the energy cost because the member we design, the architecture we design, the whole system we design enable customer to run at less energy cost. Not just for the system to consume less power, but the data center can run PUE at 1.1 or even 1.06. That's safe. Again, lots of energy cost. With resource saving architecture, for example, here, our super play, customer are able to install the enclosure the power supply, the middle plane, and lots of I.O. subsystem. Install one time and use for 12 years. While during this 12 years time frame, they can upgrade their CPU, can upgrade their memory, or upgrade their storage device every three to four years. So every refresh cycle, they buy less components, buy less subsystem and save money. Some customer can save 10% of hardware acquisition cost. Some customer can save up to 40% or even 50%. So all of those is to save money, less pollution to our planet. And we apply the same concept, green computing, resource saving to lots of our 5G telco system as well. So here I'm very happy and very proud to introduce our building box solution 5G telco product line with green computing with resource saving in mind to help you deploy much more affordable system much quicker. So with this, some of our customer claim they can save hardware acquisition cost in 12 years time span, up to 30% or even 40%. And that's net saving. Save money and reduce environmental negative impact. So all those are super micros are building computing resource saving philosophy. And we are very happy, very proud here to share our building box solution resource saving, including energy saving solution with you. And that's make 5G affordable. 
and available as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Supermicro 5G solutions are better, faster, and greener. Better with the broadest portfolio of 5G and telco systems for optimized performance, including compact 1U servers, short depth 2U servers, wall mount, compact and mini ITX edge servers, whole mounted servers, as well as 2U twin architecture and Superblade solutions. Faster, industry standard data center class performance like the short depth 2U ultra server with hyper speed and hyper turbo technology for ultra low latency. And greener with reduced TCO and environmental impact using resource saving architecture, and high efficiency power supplies, free air cooling, sub assembly refresh, and long life chassis components. For the broadest, most reliable, fastest, and energy efficient 5G and telco products in the industry, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Michael Clegg. Us who have been working from home during the COVID time. We have really come to appreciate the benefits of high-speed broadband and the flexibility that Wi-Fi brings. What we will see is that 5G is going to bring the same benefits to the wide area market. So let's take a look at the evolution of mobile networks. 3GPP, which is the mobile network standard setting body, sets a new generation around every 10 years, every decade. Typically, each new generation introduces one major new feature into the network. But 5G is a little different. With 5G, there are many applications and services as well as network architectures being introduced. So much so that it is actually coming out in multiple phases. The first phase, release 15, which is currently being deployed, is called non-standalone mode. In non-standalone mode, you connect a 5G new radio to an existing 4G core. But actually, many 4G radios can be software upgraded to 5G. Doing that, and using a technology called dynamic spectrum sharing, we can upgrade those radios and have them simultaneously work in both 4G and 5G mode. So for a time they will operate in 4G initially mostly, with a little bit in 5G. And as we get more 5G terminals, they will operate mostly or eventually completely in 5G mode. But the real benefits of 5G come when we do release 16, standalone mode. In standalone mode, the core network architecture changes from being traditional fixed function hardware to a cloud native architecture. With a cloud native, they start to operate and look like the data center solutions that we are used to. And with a cloud native network, the software runs on this, the software and hardware is disaggregated. So you have software that is now a virtual network function running on standard off the shelf compute hardware. So let's take a little look at the 5G ecosystem. So yeah, on the ecosystem, we have the core in the middle. And around that, we have three app categories, three application categories that have been defined in 5G. The first is enhanced mobile broadband. This is where your network is faster and the capacity is much greater. The second part is massive machine type communications. With massive machine type communications, we can now connect the Internet of Things devices to the 5G network. For those of you with smart homes, you will know that smart homes became a lot easier when Wi-Fi became pervasive. Because now you could put a sensor into the home without having to run a wire to each sensor. With 5G, we will be able to connect many, many devices to the 5G network without having to run a separate broadband network. But the real part of 5G that is unique is ultra-reliable low latency communications. With ultra-reliable low-latency communications, we can start to do functions and applications that are not really possible on 4G. So for those of us who've been using these cloud communication services, which is most of us, we will know how it is like when the latency is weak. Somebody will be talking and stop, and there's an awkward gap where everybody interrupts each other until you start talking again. But when the latency is low, the communications is real-time. It feels far more natural, and it happens the way it would be if you weren't working with a network. Ultra-reliable low-latency communications will bring that same capability into the 5G network. So now we can start to do things like um, automated guided vehicles, um, autonomous driving, drones, um, 
these types of applications, augmented reality, virtual reality, that rely on a real-time connection. So let's have a look at the network architecture as deployed. On the bottom plane over here, you see your 5G network. You have your data center at the right hand side. Remember 5G with cloud native looks just like any other IT data center. And we have some talks today about the servers and products we have for that. This goes out to the radio access network, the RAN, and even the RAN network is following this disaggregated software and hardware model. Even the networking protocols can be disaggregated, and we will talk about that in an example today as well. At the top, you have your application plane. You will see that these two look very familiar because, again, everything is now cloud native. You have a data center in the cloud, and you have your terminal and your application processing. But in order to take advantage of that ultra reliable low latency, you also need to move compute closer to that application. So now we have edge compute, multi access edge compute or MEC. So what we're going to see with 5G is that it's going to drive a completely new market in edge compute applications and services. Now a benefit of 5G is when the traffic comes in from the network, you can do a local breakout and go straight to that edge compute that is co-located with the radio access network. So the traffic no longer has to go all the way to the core and come back again where you suffer that high latency. To keep the low, high, keep the low latency, you can break out locally and process locally. So this is what is going to make these ultra-reliable low latency communications possible and we'll see a growth in edge compute. So as we go forward, we really see the 5G network is going to be quite revolutionary. Edge compute by itself is going to drive many new applications, including augmented reality and virtual reality and other services that will require real-time communications as we can see on this slide. My name is Maury Lin, Senior Director IoT in Belly Product leading edge computing innovation in Supermicro. The keynote session here is about the 5G and high-performance edge computing. Supermicro would like to continually share our innovation here with you for the edge computing deployment with the 5G technology. In front of you, you notice that there is a non-traditional recommendable machines. Yes, it's an outdoor computer allow you to deliver the server performance to solve the problem you have at edge for the telco environment. We understand the telecom and virtualization infrastructures suffering lots of challenge. Because of this, we hear lots of feedback from the partners and customers as well. They would like to decouple from the proprietary design hardware, but they also need to keep the highly secured environment cohesively exchange the data efficiently. Because of this, the Open Radio Access Network and the Open Radio Access Network Alliance become a very good options for you to think about. In the cloud environment, there's a lot of orchestration ready for virtualization. But when you extend your computing power to the edge, there's a lot of things need to be considered, such as the asset management, remote controlled, and also remote update. And also you need to keep the Xeon D performance with the Xeon scale level possibility for all the FPGA as well. All these things are very friendly for the data center environment. But at the edge side, all those beautiful things become very challenged. We understand. So that's why after we have so many experience in the data center for the core networks, for the high performance edge computing, GPU, capital storage, all together here, we bring those technologies to the edge, but still stay with small form factor for indoor and also for the outdoor environment. We understand the coming future for the edge computing, not just about the high performance, there are lots of factors need to be considered. For instance, like the low power and high performance scalable architecture in a very secure environment. Because of this, from the cloud to the edge, it's possible to make this 5G ORAN, MEC, SD1 and UCP all together. And to make this possible, 
We also need to have the more aggregate intelligent gateway to collect the data. And FANLESS for sure will be very friendly to all kinds of environments. We also keep the Xeon performance inside. Because of this, it's allow you to scalable your architectures from data center and also allow your orchestrations extended through the channel all the way to the edge. It's a beautiful idea. And it's also a deployment now. We understand because of this combinations all together, customers will ask you to give you more choices to solve the all kind of challenge they have right now. For instance, they will ask you how we are going to solve the problem together when I have the machine need to mount outside of data center. On the pole or on the wall? I have a different power source mixed with the DC and also AC environment. Do you have a platform allow me to switch in the different computing platform without changing too much? And we also have the front IO design, allow you to do the easy service abilities. All this all combined together still cannot solve the problems. The machine needs to be cloud native for the architecture's design, for the 5G, AI, and H. To combine all this together, there are several things to be managed. We choose the one example to share with you is for the vehicle to everything, V2X. When the autonomous driving machines talking to each other, the latency will create a huge challenge. And the high definition camera collect all the data also need to process locally with FPGA. To make this all possible, then you need to have a Xeon performance stay at the edge and solve the challenge from the operational environment and also continue delivering the performance. So greetings everybody. My name is Jay Lawrence. I'm the general manager of technology enablement here at Supermicro. Uh, we're gonna be talking today about our solutions for the uh, enhanced the new 5G uh, micro data centers. To start, um, one of the things we'd like to do here is try to encapsulate message within application and 5G, uh, as Supermicro sees, it certainly presents a world of change in the telecom industry. Uh, we look at some of the key tenets of what 5G means to the consumer and the user experience. Key items like latency, where latency has been driven down to a millisecond from tens or hundreds of milliseconds in prior generations, uh, payloads going up by a factor of 10 or 100x, and availability uh, increasing to the theoretical five nines, which is a very difficult measure to achieve. Um, and we're presently involved in a number of very interesting 5G and 5G-esque uh, applications. Uh, we're involved in health networks to help uh, in the current pandemic that are uh, leveraging Supermicro's compute networking and storage capabilities, both for uh, telepresence, medicine, and, and first responder activities that are very unique and require uh, some of the new technologies and products that we have brought to market and are continuing to bring to market to satisfy the 5G requirement. Uh, further, uh, one of the key uh, pieces of our DNA as a company, uh, as a very sophisticated hardware company, has been a focus on energy efficiency and uh, resource reuse. And we're gonna talk a bit about that as we move through uh, today's presentation. Um, so as we look at what 5G means, one of the best ways to articulate it is what does it mean to the user? And also what sorts of new businesses and business models will 5G enable? Uh, if you just look back in a short period of time, uh, I would say who at Blockbuster thought that a 4G telecommunications technology would permit Netflix to proliferate the industry and YouTube to grow to its uh, current size and strength and ostensibly uh, put them on the bookshelf. We know 5G is gonna bring up things with the artificial intelligence and virtual and augmented reality domains, but there will be new things. And I mentioned medical telepresence, uh, not having to go to your doctor, doing it through a tablet with low latency and high capacity and great video capabilities. So there are a number of things you can look at, and uh, even specifically the very top line of this chart 
the old uh, multiple hours to download a movie coming down to minutes uh, is an impressive feat, but it's going to take an awful lot uh, in the network architecture. And Supermicro is very focused on this network architecture. Uh, if you look at where we're coming from in 4G, uh, as it was in 3 and 2Gs before that, the structure was very centric to the central office and large data centers with large racks of servers and centralized data. This creates problems for availability. Uh, it creates problems for latency because the data that's needed at the user experience side is too far away and the computing capability is just too far away. New wireless technologies to power the access network or the RAM, the radio access network, are evolving from old microwave technologies into new millimeter wave technologies and leveraging all sorts of new antenna capabilities. That said, Supermicro was at the forefront of 4G. And as we see where we're going in 5G, we believe that we have brought to market over the period of the past few quarters a battery of products uh, and those products being most meaningful for the new data center application, uh, which we're going to have Jerry talk to us about here in a little bit, and also some edge computing products, which we view as one of the most profound tenets to achieve uh, the requirements of the 5G experience. And uh, we're going to have Chuck talk to us about some of those capabilities at the end. But when you look at the overlay and what the 5G network looks like, and then look at the Supermicro product portfolio that has gone through both the durability, uh, the standards, the fit and form factor, uh, the move to DC power, uh, we believe that uh, we have just begun and will continue to develop products that are going to be most suited towards improving both our partners' capability to roll this technology out and further to create great user experiences because uh, Supermicro products are placed uh, and developed strategically for form, fit, and function from the central office to the new data centers and to the edge. So I'm going to invite Chuck and Jerry to jump in here with me. Um, this is just a cross section of our product portfolio uh, that we believe is a good fit and has been well used in the 5G and the general telecommunications environment, uh, in particular over the last several quarters, as I mentioned. You have to note, though, that one of the things about Supermicro is we have such a broad uh, range of SKUs, well over a thousand active, that we can solve for many of our customers what feels like a custom project by using commercial off-the-shelf Supermicro components and be very creative in doing so. So, uh, Jerry, why don't I start with you, uh, and perhaps if you can give us a little context uh, about some of the products that are here maybe focus more towards the cloud and the ultras, and then we'll have Chuck come in and talk a bit more about the uh, the edge uh, products uh, after that. Jerry? Great, thanks, Jay. So just to reiterate one key message that Jay was talking about is that super micro, we really have the product breadth and the depth when it comes to server storage type of um, platforms. Uh, what you do see here on the screen is going to be a wide variety of rack mount solutions, uh, namely the ultras and the 1U2 form factors that can accommodate many different type of configurations with the latest CPU, memory, storage, expansion slots, and so forth. Our latest platform in the ultra family is going to be the short depth, which we'll talk about in the upcoming slides. If you're looking for node density, the Big Twin and Blade are going to be great rack mount solutions will allow you to accommodate a combination of compute, storage, and node density within these particular enclosures. And last but not least, GPU. Um, if you're looking for platforms that can accommodate, you know, either two, four, up to eight, or even more dual width GPUs, we happen to have those particular products in a one, two, and four U, and even larger enclosures. So compute, storage, different type of form factors, pretty much we have some solutions. Great, so uh, Chuck, why don't you just give us a quick intro on some of our uh, edge computing capabilities and uh, talk about some of the uh, features at a high level and then we'll break into some of the products specifically. Sounds good, thank you, Jay. Um, welcome everyone. I'll be kind of talking about the left-hand side of this slide. Uh, down on the lower left-hand 
corner, we have two models that I'll be talking about for edge compute. One is the 1019D. That is our 1U ultra short depth server, and it's in the compact server line. And the next is the E403 server, um, which is a wall mount server. Um, and then lastly, on the upper left-hand side is our Outdoor Edge product, and uh, I will get in a little bit into that as we uh, move further in the presentation. So great. So uh, let's do that now. Um, and again, just to summarize here, this is a, a, a distribution of products that are fit for the telecom environment. Important that everybody remember our, our very rich DNA uh, in depth, as uh, Jerry mentioned, in uh, product options. Uh, Jerry, why don't you, if you would, uh, you mentioned the short depth uh, product, uh, if you would uh, take us through this and give us some details. Great, yeah, I'm really proud to introduce our latest 2U Ultra. Um, the Ultra is built on a modular architecture, which really allows us to quickly adapt a wide variety of configurations and reduce the overall time to market. This is our new short depth design which reduces the length to only 22.6 inches, which is essential for a lot of the micro data centers out there. With the open platform design, you can support the latest 205 watt CPUs and up to 24 DIMMs, which will basically give you up to six terabytes of memory. And for those of you guys who are looking for DCMM support, which is the data center persistent memory modules, we can support up to 12 of those particular modules, which will thus increase your overall memory pool to up to nine terabytes. We also have flexible networking as well as expansion slots. So if you want to incorporate GPUs, we can support up to two dual width or up to four single width GPUs in this 2U design. Um, keep in mind, all those particular GPUs will be running at the four by 16s. As for serviceability, it's been greatly enhanced with the six heavy duty hot swappable front loading fans. So all this is powered through our AC or DC power supply options. Um, with all these great features you get with the Ultra, you now get it in a short depth chassis. So if you'd like to learn more about this, guys, uh, you can always go to our Supermicro website and check out the 2029U-MTNRV platform. Uh, fantastic, Jerry. Uh, good looking stuff here. So, uh, Chuck, let's flip over to you for a moment and talk about some of the edge devices that uh, you've been working on. Sounds good. Okay, well, uh, first we're going to start with our 1019D, and uh, this server is uh, a one-use server designed for edge compute with a number of key applications that you can see on the lower left-hand side, things like use CPE, CRAN, multi-access edge computing, edge computing, and, and vehicle-to-everything type of compute. Um, one nice thing about this server is a very short depth, uh, only 15.7 inches, so it's very nice and compact. Thus is why we call it one of our uh, compact server line uh, models. Um, it can support one Intel Skylake D processor up to 105 watts. Uh, has four slots for memory, uh, maximum 512 gigs. Uh, and then uh, we also have four two and a half inch SATA drives as well for internal storage. We have, do have a little bit of flexibility in networking with 1G and 10G um, options, um, and then uh, standard uh, two PCIe 3.0 by 16, or you can uh, mix and match with one PCIe 3.0 by 16 and, and two. Uh, by eight cards. We also have three fans, and then we have uh, two types of power, uh, all power being redundant. We have a uh, redundant 600 watt DC and redundant 800 watt uh, power supplies as well. So great, that's a little Chuck. bit about the 1019. Great, great. So let's switch on to the, uh, the E403. Okay, sounds good. The E403 is part of our uh, compact wall mount server line, and is the first thing you'll notice is it's uh, much larger in that it's three units high instead of one, like the 1019. Um, there are a, a few reasons for this, um, but uh, we'll get to those in a second. Um, again, some of the same types of uh, applications um, uh, that you saw on the previous server. However, um, uh, as I mentioned, this is a deeper uh, or 
uh, height wise three units uh, rack mount server um, like the previous server uh, supports one Intel Skylake D up to 105 watt uh, four DIMMs up to 512 gigs of memory four two and a half inch SATA drives uh, one or 10 G uh, networking and then um, the, the, what we have added in this is this is a actually a three IO um, system so that you can get a little bit more expandability. In fact, if you wanted to use GPUs, you could put three Tesla T4 GPU cards within this server. Um, same three uh, fan as, as the uh, previous servers, and again, redundant power with both 600 DC or 800 AC power supplies. And the reason we have the extra I.O. and uh, DC power for this particular server will be a little bit clearer on the next slide if we could move forward, please. Uh, this is our outdoor edge um, cabinet system. And what we've done with this system is we've taken the ability to take a cabinet and actually put it on a pole and put it out uh, outside for uh, additional connectivity. Um, the Outdoor Edge cabinet actually uh, houses an E403 server that we just reviewed, so the system specs will all be the same, but um, what we do is we package it as an entire complete system, and then you can put it outside um, of a campus or, uh, you know, really sky's the limit where it, where it could be used. Uh, being that it's an outside cabinet, we needed to go through uh, strenuous tests to make sure that it could handle harsh conditions. And as you can see, um, it will uh, work just fine in negative 40 degrees Celsius up to to uh, 40 degrees Celsius. And if you prefer Fahrenheit, that equates to negative 40 Fahrenheit and 114.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I should mention that the Outdoor Edge system is being covered in a different training module during today's sessions. So make sure you head on over to view that. If you ex have any uh, additional interest, they will go in a much deeper dive. Uh, but with that, uh, that's the end of my segment. Great, great. So getting GPUs at the edge uh, is certainly a very powerful uh, uh, message for uh, edge computing capabilities, uh, to say the least. Um, <clears throat> early in the, in the discussion, we mentioned the investment that uh, Supermicro has made with many of these standard products and continues to make to bring them through the NEBS compliance. Um, NEBS being a very important uh, quality check, a good housekeeping seal of approval, if you will, for the, uh, the major telecom players. And ostensibly, uh, the benefits of going through this is it demonstrates uh, that we have created a product that can both be a good neighbor and citizen in a data center or a central office, uh, and two, uh, can survive and perform uh, in very harsh environments. I'm not going to read the list off uh, uh, here, but uh, you know, hostile uh, events like uh, earthquakes or even fire, uh, you know, are applied, uh, and those circumstances are applied during the testing. Uh, to demonstrate that uh, what we have done uh, in our designs and uh, our product enhancements helps to support uh, the telecom customer uh, for their concerns and uh, their needs to have this capability. We've already taken, as I mentioned, a few products through. Uh, we presently have a couple of products that are in the, uh, the lab and about to come out and a few about to go in. So I'm going to turn back to uh, Jerry and Chuck again here. Uh, just after a quick call out to the GPU server that uh, is located, it's the SIS uh, 1029GQ. Uh, this is a very powerful device for uh, edge computing with four uh, NVIDIA V100s in it. And uh, we expect to have that uh, through the, uh, the NEBS uh, test uh, shortly. Um, and then, uh, Jerry, why don't we start with you and just talk about uh, some of the uh, items you're working on here. And I'm going to pull up our roadmap as well. Uh, to let you talk against that uh, as you're walking us through your pieces. Sure, thank you. So as we take a look at this, uh, NEBS is actually very important to us. And what we've done with the Ultra Rack Mount Solutions is that we enabled the full NEBS Level 3 certification onto our 1U 12-bay Ultra. Um, this is going to be a 1U Rack Mount that will support up to 12 MVME full hybrid drive base. So if you're looking for SAS, SATA, or NVMe support, this particular platform will be able to support that in a redundant AC or DC variant. On top of that, we're also going to basically have um, plans to 
uh, certify our 2U Ultra short depth server that we just talked about, and those will also have the AC-DC variant. Great. Uh, Chuck, you want to add just a, a quick comment or two on, uh, on uh, your edge devices? Oh, yeah, sure. I would like to just mention that, you know, Supermicro takes the time to listen to our customers, and we're doing everything we can to meet their not only their needs, but their demands. And as such, we've come a long way with our NEB certification in the last year, and that will continue to grow over the next year or two. Uh, we will be adding more additional servers, and we, we will strive to make sure that uh, all our servers are built with the highest level of uh, quality that we can make them, and uh, look for more great things on the NEBS side down the road from Supermicro. Great, Chuck. Thanks. So to kind of tie everything together here, uh, as we started off looking at some of the tenant requirements for 5G and both availability and latency and more bandwidth and energy savings, we've tried to give you a good cross-section of products, and this product portfolio is evolving and developing quickly. We, as Chuck mentioned, we certainly love to get our customers and partners to come talk to us about new challenges uh, that they have. But uh, the fact that we have such a large capability in development uh, and such a large range of uh, SKUs that give us width and depth uh, to solve many problems in the telecom space, uh, we certainly encourage uh, those conversations and welcome uh, folks to come and talk to us. Uh, and I can't underscore the fact that we will continue to be completely focused on making sure that the products both inform workload, function, storage, uh, power configuration also have the certifications. And this is an area where we have uh, already invested and will continue to invest uh, considerably. And uh, again, if you'd like to learn more about any of these products, please feel free to visit us at www.supermicro.com. Thank you for tuning in to the 2020 Computex Online Talks. This year's online talks will go live on Computex's Facebook and YouTube channels from June 2nd to 4th. The recorded videos of all the talks will be published immediately on the same channels, so you can watch them again afterwards. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you at the next Computex. is going to change a hundred percent of the jobs of the future. So we are today in a really exciting place for AI to come in and change the way and scale and augment human behavior and augment human jobs. So it's a very exciting space to be in. Computex, it's really more of a technological show. You actually speak into the people who design and develop the products. You also see many more of the component and technology vendors like Intel and the other suppliers. You don't really get access to this type of information at other trade shows. Taiwan has a great base for R&D and IT applications. And therefore, Computex in Taipei is in fact a great place to have this conference, bring different experts from different fields and let them share their experiences and prepare them for the future. has an incredible ecosystem, especially when it comes to hardware 
and uh, B2C. You have created some incredible companies. We have 10 countries and 30 startups. We have arranged about 200 one-on-one meetings, so we are very happy and excited. It's the best place to come if you are looking for big company solutions. It are necessary to keep growing the market and keep expanding the business. For me, it's very easy to find all the manufacturers at Computex and in one place. Computex really help us to understand how technology is going to progress in the future. Um, I think yeah, it's a really significant show. This is the best show in the world. All the brain power has really remained here. If you're not doing business with Taiwanese companies, you're probably not in the industry.